Welcome to this rapid revision session on Project C in Birmingham, 1963. C equals confrontation. What was Campaign C? Well, we can get some hints from these pictures. Firstly, look at the one at the top. We can see some peaceful protesters. They look very young. In fact, some of them appear to be children. And we have a police officer who's taking those signs off of them. They're clearly not breaking any laws. They're expressing their right to peaceful protest, but still they're being prevented from doing so. Then compare that with the, the scene down below. Here we can see that things have escalated and that there is a, a violent clashes, or at least suggestions of violent clashes, between protesters, again, who seem really young, and the police. So where did all this come from? Well, the background to this is some rather unsuccessful campaigning and a change of tactics. In 1961, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People and others staged marches and boycotts in Albany, Georgia. There were arrests, but no public violence. In December that year, the Southern Christ uh, Christian Leadership Conference and Martin Luther King got involved. Again, there was no violence. Good news. But pro these protests drew little coverage from the media, and so did very little to change anything. On April the 2nd of 1963, SNCC, SCLC and the ACMHR, that's the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights, began Campaign C, sometimes referred to as Project C. They chose Birmingham, Alabama, for the following reasons. The city was very segregated, and so it's a place that needed to be brought to attention and that needed to change. White terrorism there had earned it the name Bombingham under the, after a number of black churches and homes had been attacked. People had indeed been killed. And also because of their chief of police, or rather the Commissioner for Public Safety, Bull Connor, who was a violent racist who would be easy to provoke into attacking peaceful protesters. And that is precisely what happened, and in so doing, it gained publicity. Let's have a look at how. The violence in Birmingham, May 1963. Between the 2nd and 3rd of May, there were sit-ins, boycotts and protest marches. Around 1,000 people were arrested by Bull Connor's police. Uh, that's Bull Connor in the corner there. Connor's response as Commissioner for Public Safety was brutal. Protesters had expected a confrontation, and they certainly got one. One of the common tactics was the use of fire hoses. These had been set at £50 per square inch and fired at the protesters, which could knock them to the ground. Later, Connor authorised the uh, increase in power up to 100 psi, which could genuinely break bones. Also, you had mass arrests, beatings and alleged torture within the jails. Many of the people who had been arrested were in fact young people. After the first day of uh, uh, having lost uh, a thousand people to arrests, many uh, of the young people in the city decided to take the matters into their hands instead. So they walked out of school, started protesting, and they too were arrested. Scenes of very young people and even school children being arrested, beaten up, shot up with, um, with fire hoses, and being dumped, dumped into overcrowded police cells went around the country and shocked many people. Including this very famous image here. This man was actually a bystander, not an active uh, participant within the protest, and yet still we can see a police dog has been set on him. All of this got the world's attention, and the attention of the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. The protests in Birmingham achieved their aim in attracting mass publicity. Some, including some civil rights groups, were critical at how young people were put at risk, but the publishing of photographs of police brutality in Time magazine and footage of, on TV news shocked the country and the world. Could the USA claim to be the home of the free with such scenes going on? This could be a major propaganda victory for Soviet Russia, who would like to claim that the United States was indeed a very unfree place. President Kennedy was compelled to speak to the nation on the need for civil rights, and this is what he said. This is taken from a part of his televised speech, a still of which is shown in the photograph. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal and that the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. This is often seen as evidence that President Kennedy was getting behind the civil rights movement and was likely to introduce legis legislation soon. But he never got the chance to, and so we'll never be entirely sure how committed to the cause he was because he was assassinated in November of 1963 before he could take any substantial action. So what did the events in Birmingham result in? Firstly, it provided valuable lessons for both civil rights protesters and, in fact, their opponents. 
Civil rights protesters learned that their policy of inviting violence from opponents worked because it won them publicity and sympathy in the USA and worldwide. But on the other hand, opponents of civil rights, including state officials and the police, learned that violence against protesters would escalate situations, bring them bad publicity and win sympathy for the protesters. It would be counterproductive to their cause. And so both sides were ready to change tactics somewhat. Some final points then. Project C was controversial among protesters. It was a deliberate attempt to get publicity through provoking a violent backlash. It used a large number of young people in the protest, putting them in harm's way. But images of Bull Connor's brutality shocked the nation and prompted President Kennedy to deliver a speech in favour of civil rights. Spurred on by this, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom was organised later in that summer. And indeed, that will be the topic of my next Rapid Revision video. I hope that this one has been useful. If it has, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more of the same. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching and goodbye.